All right, we about to get started. I know I'm late. Peace, everybody. This lecture is about learning to use your thoughts and emotions for success and optimal body health. Peace, family. We about to jump in. Share this lecture with all of your family and friends. Um, so they can tune in. They might learn something of great value by tuning in. Okay, so the full title of this is Learning to Use Your Thoughts and Emotions for Success and Optimal Bodily Health. The Biological and Mental Impact of the Truth versus the Lie. There we are. And we are here to help our people get a better self-awareness so that they can make better decisions. Good decisions or functional decisions more than likely are going to bring you good or functional outcomes. Bad decisions are more than likely going to bring you bad or dysfunctional outcomes. And one of the things that helps us with that is our sensory perception. How mature is it? How well developed is it? How healthy are the things that help us sense in our bodies functioning how well is their structure upheld uh, in their performance? And that requires a physically healthy body. So generally speaking, people who are physically healthy and doing things to promote that health will have a greater success. All right? And... That greater success um, is equated to their bodily health. It's not based on the fad. It's not based on your belief. It's based on functions. And the truth and the lie affect you biochemically, physiologically. I always say that honesty is the smoothest ride in the universe. And what I mean by that is the lie creates a lot of friction internally and generates measurable trauma in the brain and the body. You can track this, all right? And so the first thing that I want to do is to 
give some caveats. I am pro-education. I believe that people should embark upon education that they see as worthy of being used to accomplish their goals in life. However, if your sensory perception is not at a sufficient level, you may embark in what you think is a rewarding education and you may, may end up in debt and still not functioning within your purpose. How many people go to college, different levels, bachelor, master, sometimes PhD, and they don't develop the skill sets in order to navigate that set of rewards that they have been given in different contexts. Meaning, you got a PhD, but you get fired, you get laid off, you don't know how to create your own job. So you're stuck. Not only are you stuck with not having the ability to have uh, the mindset and the dexterity to be self-sufficient, but you're in debt. You know, a lot of debt. So going to school does not make you intelligent. Degrees do not make you intelligent. Degrees do not always make you functional. And for a slave-minded people, a people who are any people, not just our people, any people who are used to governing themselves within a framework of manipulation, you sometimes hold high value in things that do not perform good outcomes. Your family could be proud of the person who goes to school and gets their medical degree and becomes an MD and look at and shun the entrepreneur. I've seen that happen. But yet, if the doctor uh, gets caught in a lawsuit and loses his license, he's done. But the entrepreneur has a diverse enough mind to survive through a pandemic or, you know, times where the economy might be a little shaky. Which one is exuding the highest level of intelligence? The entrepreneur is. But our values, because they are shaped by other people who don't have our best interests, they become our own curses. So this is not only a caveat, inspiration to people. Strive towards designing and developing your own purpose despite what people feel who are around you. Family members, friends, could be a husband or a wife, could be children, could be anybody. When you are driven and you are using all your faculties of intelligence to do stuff patiently with wisdom, don't listen to the exterior voices who are or have a value system that is not at the level of intelligence or maybe not intelligent at all. You shouldn't listen to them. In this world, you have two types of people. You have free people and you have people who are self-subjecting themselves to dysfunctional manipulation. Those two types of people. And those two types of people are the people who I want to focus on in this conversation about success, bodily health, and learning to use your thoughts and emotions to accomplish success. Because you fall in one of those categories right now in different areas of your life. You fall in one of those categories. 
And when you're under some form of dysfunctional manip manipulation through your voluntary acts or ignorance, whatever it may be, you're more than often going to get bad outputs and outcomes. Right? In just a, a little bit of time, you're going to have billions of people practicing in their religion what they call Ramadan. Ramadan is a month of fasting. It celebrates the time that Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad, uh, peace be upon him, started receiving revelations. We have taught people over a decade, longer than that, that that's not the real Ramadan. And we can prove it through measurable history, science, the Quran, etc. With, with evidence and proof at such a level, it's irrefutable that there has been an intentional protracted, planned attempt to hide, discard, and move people away from what the originators did. Now, what has that developed in? That's developed into people who are not aware of that reality, making bad decisions under dysfunctional manip manipulation that can produce multiple bad outcomes. What are some of those bad outcomes? Some of those bad outcomes are every year, since you want to follow those groups of people, people go to a place that was not the original center of that system that was developed. I won't call it really religion because all Islam was, was a political and cultural and let's call it spiritual rebellion to the Roman and Sassanid rule by indigenous Egyptians and people in the lower parts of that area who they referred to as Blimes, Nobades, which are Nubians and the people in Eritrea and Ethiopia. They rebelled against that colonization. They were rebelling. And in that process, they were reconfiguring cultural dynamics that were a part of their ancestry to do so. And Mecca was not the source or the place where this rebellion originated. Absolutely not. I can debate anybody on that point. Point for point, a point, a panel of unbiased people with uh, um, an ability to judge and win. But one of the bad outcomes is if you're going to listen to those people, then you're going to go and do Umrah and Hajj to a place that was not the historical place. And every year people die and get trampled. So much so that the groups of people who are orchestrating the Umrah and the Hajj, um, what do they do? They take out insurance. <laughs> they take out insurance. Could you imagine making toe off around a place that was all made up, it's, it's all fake, and you actually die? And they say, all you say is Allah Akbar. That is what you call dysfunctional manipulation, bad decisions, lack of self-awareness, and now the, the, the bad outcome. That's not success. It's not even bodily health because the way that they're teaching you to orchestrate the fast can be proven diagnostically that you are <laughs> at war with your own body. Not the original way it was done, but how it's being taught to you now. And so that is a... For those who are unaware of what I'm saying, you can still consider that a debatable topic because you're still in opinion mode. And that's okay. I've taken that up. I wrote a 437 page dissertation on that entire subject. And so we could have that discussion. We've had that discussion year after year after year. But there are black people or indigenous people here 
who are following groups of people who are foreign to their culture, their uh, purpose, natural purpose, and it's to their detriment. You're wasting your time. You're, you're giving zakat to entities who have historically worked against you. There were informants placed in the black community to push you in that direction. And without self-awareness and doing the knowledge to that particular thing, you start getting dysfunctional or bad outcomes. How many people who are fasting have diabetes, high blood pressure, all of these different things? You are following the divine supreme being of the universe and you can't maintain your health in that submission. That means your formulas are wrong or your understanding is wrong. Your perception is wrong. We talk a lot about perception. And so now you have a problem. You are under dysfunctional manipulation. Your thoughts and feelings are not even your own thoughts and feelings. They are a byproduct of the dysfunctional manipulation. You're not thinking for yourself. You're basically the walking dead. And so now if Ramadan was when Muhammad started receiving the Quran, you could go right to Surah Al-Najm and he talks about in those first eight to nine ayat, him receiving it and it being marked by the setting of a star and it mentions that same star in the same surah, Al-Shira, with a broken plural, so specific in the linguistics that it's talking about multiple stars because it's a broken plural. And those stars are three stars that we know as the Sirius constellation. So why would the man under the title of Muhammad be using a star system that was known in the same area, Egypt, as a basis of them charting uh, one of their multiple calendars. The Arabs never used Sirius as a star charting system beyond learning it from indigenous peoples in what we are now calling Africa. Not even there. Then the book goes further. As I said in the song, I'm on my bismillah, Surah 997, my arrows do not miss. Go to Surah 997 and you'll be going to begin to see that the group of people that we call Arabs were vassals under the Roman and Sassanid empires. And they were in opposition to these early groups of Saracens, Nobates, and Blemes, which had also had different names, uh, Mujahideen and the Al-Ansari which were the uh, under the umbrella of the Umayyah, which you misnamed the Umayyads. These were the progenitors of the cultural, spiritual, and political rebellion that started in the Thebaid in Egypt against Rome and the Sassanid Empire, the Persians. All of this is data that is verifiable. Adolf Groen has a library and a museum of over 16,000 artifacts. Some of those books run $10,000. These are Germans, uh, British, and American anthropologists, archaeologists, uh, you know, different groups of people, scholars, who are collecting this stuff on the Umayyad history. And you can go right to the Quran in Surah uh, 7, I got 157, and it's specifically, no one taught you this before me, not one person on earth, and you can check it. The Nabi there is called Umayyah, and you can't uh, fight against the linguistics. And why am I pointing this out on this one thing about religion? It leads to how we think and how we feel and where is it actually coming from? Because the, these are not sometimes your thoughts or your feelings. These are the product of your slave masters, the people who think for you, giving you these perceptions and you agreeing to it. 
So you can go right to that surah and you can see that it's not umi. There are three vowel sounds. Fata, kasra, and dama. A, I, and U. And when you look at those little diacritical lines, you will see it's two fatas, umaya. Nabi. The Nabi was the Umaya. Now you got to go back and redo the whole Hadith histories. Now you got to go back and look at how confused the Islamic teachers here in the Western Hemisphere are to this day. Now you got to see what I've been, have I been investing my time in? Because you want to be a believer instead of a student who is going to be studious, who's going to be patient, who's going to take their time and who's going to acquire knowledge in a way that is beneficial to self. Instead of doing that, you're going to go with mob psychology. I'll believe you. I'll follow you because you're famous. I'll do all these things to my own injury, wasting my time, my money, uh, detracting me away from a focus that could have been helping me design my own purpose. And thus we go to the truth and the lie. Or we go to the free people who are self-aware. Free people are always self-aware. And the slaves, the serfs, the peasants are always dysfunctionally manipulated by another group of people. Ain't no damn spirits, possessions jumping out. These are people who are manipulating you into ways of thinking. And they are affecting your physiology, your anatomy, your health of your body. And they are taking away the most natural thing that you have for yourself, which is the ability to develop your purpose based on your personal attributes which signifies why you are here. Two enlightened parents plan a child aware of what they are doing, who they are creating. This is self-awareness at the highest level. The other level is, man, I just made a baby with her. I made a mistake. You didn't plan the child because you're not self-aware. Any woman that I and me would ever think about having sex with, in my mind, whether I was uh, self-aware enough or not, I was thinking I could work with this particular woman. It might not have been a situation where I wanted to have a child with her, but I can work with her as a wife or a consort. Right? And in our jurisdiction, those two things mean two different things. A wife is a woman who you will marry, who you want to have children with. A consort, consort is a woman who you will marry, who you have no plans to have children with, but you have the plans to produce things with. Why would you put yourself in a potential to have a 18 or plus more year sentence with a person who you don't even like? Where did you get that thinking from? And how are your hormones operating inside of your body in a way that's functional or dysfunctional? Because you do know that there are steroid hormones that can bypass the cellular membrane and go directly to your DNA and start talking to you. You do know that, right? These are called hydrophobic receptors. And you can have some dysfunctional hydrophobic reception going on in your body 
that is catalyzing what you are calling emotions. Emotions are not spirits flying around. Thoughts are not things, just spirits, immaterial things floating around. I'm sorry. You live in a world where you now have to study if you believe that. No, 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 no. Sadness? Oh, yes. We can generate sadness. Anger? Oh, yes. We can generate anger. Depression? Shame? Guilt? We can make, if, if you are not self-aware, we can make you feel these things. Under what I term uh, colonized hypnosis. Colonized hypnosis is the ability of a colonizer to put you under hypnosis because you are agreeing to that covenant. So your belief don't mean nothing. Your belief that it's Ramadan, your belief that you Sadness is not a thing. It means nothing. I'm about to show you. I'm going to show you. So now, if you aren't self-aware of that, you're being manipulated. And it's not always the case of the detail of the science, per se, because that's the science, the measurement part. It is the awareness of the foundation. If you know that these non-eumelanated people have an origin and a past history of doing things that are detrimental to indigenous peoples, you will already start curbing your lifestyle and your fortress to protect yourself against believing and trusting. And you don't need to have all the details of what Somebody knows in order to successfully defend yourself. Because none of us know everything. And we don't need to. We have to have a proper foundation that can guard and protect us. Not only against them, but against people who look like us, who act against us. Out of their dysfunctional manipulation. Let me ask you a question. Would you knowingly and intrusively go to somebody from Cambodia and argue down, them down to the ground that they are Chinese? If you did, not only would you show you have no respect, but you would also show you are lacking knowledge of that person, their family history, their family lineage. And so you need to chill and let somebody represent to you who they are. Why would you go somebody to somebody from Japan and classify them as Korean? Because you're using the eyeball test? Now, we can say, wait a minute, their nationality and political stance might not be these particular things, but somewhere back in history, they have common ancestors genetically. Okay, thank you. Then we can begin to have a genetic conversation if you're able to. So why is it that Afrocentric people go to India, go to islands in the Pacific, Melanesia, Polynesia, and they see people with hair like mine, and they automatically say, you're African. They can go to South America, to the jungles in Brazil, and say, oh, yeah, yeah, you got to be from Africa. You're African. You're politically African or you're African. What do you mean? 
You're using the eyeball test now. Y'all tell us don't use the eyeball test. Just because you had some old make of mine with hair like this, and don't be using the eyeball test. But now you're using the eyeball test. And your eyeball test comes from your enemy. The fact that you are classifying somebody as African. I'm just dealing with examples now of dysfunctional thought that comes from dysfunctional manipulation from a colonizer who had the intent to create confusion. You're trying to call somebody after an, a Roman white goddess, Africa. We already, we already proved that. Not only was she a Roman white goddess, she was revered and worshipped in the temple by the Romans before they went out to war. Then later, there were physical jurisdictions from Roman emperors, Africanus Proconsularis, that were named after her. The first coins that were minted were Roman, if we want to use the term Europeans, with the term Africa on it. So now if I don't want to be associated with that because of that history, because of the political nature of what that does to my national, if I want to be associated with that, you're screaming at me to say, I hate my people. That's emotion. That's lack of intelligence. That's dysfunctional manipulation that you are subjected to that I am not. That's you not even having the decency to ask me about my family history. Shit. And then we can go into haplogroups. And we can go a whole lot of ways depending on who you're talking to. But the point is, you are under the dysfunctional manipulation. There are groups and work groups of elite European thinkers who wanted that thinking on us for their particular purposes. Why would Franz Boaz want that on us? Why would these other high-level Jews want that on us? What, were, what do they know that we lost in colonization, in genocide? Maybe you don't know that. Maybe I do. So don't disrespect me. Because I got this kinky hair and you melanin, you want to make me 36% Malian. So now if you talk to somebody who's free, not under dysfunctional manipulation, who uh, does genetic testing, does epigenetic testing, and can perform these things and can uh, present a way better picture about uh, human populations, you have to understand that a free self-aware person's study is different than a dysfunctional manipulated person. We're not the same. We are not the same. And so these examples are examples of how smart people really do And what I want to do is show you, okay, hmm, this is interesting. How is it that my lying black ass is causing my lack of success and injuring my body, causing trauma in my limbic system and other parts of my brain just because I don't value the truth? I don't value honesty. I'm going to lie to my wife. Yeah, baby, I'm going to the store. Meanwhile, you texting the other chick like, yeah, I'm going to be there in five minutes. That's a low testosterone male 
married to a woman who cannot detect low testosterone males, causing confusion in a community, causing breakdowns, and who is self-aware that that same breakdown that is happening in the social infrastructure that he's doing is also happening in his own body. Literally, literally, that I'm about to detail happened in his own body. Instead of saying, hey, look, and this is my stance. I'm not against polygyny or monogamy. I'm against colonization. And so what colonization did is I'm going to force you into our style of monogamy so we can control your families. For you, the girl on Facebook, Arguing against polygyny because of your limbic system trauma, lack of self-esteem, and emotions. Directly agreeing with the colonization and the forced monogamy, and you call yourself conscious. That's trauma blocking you from a higher uh, operative brain that could think better, do more, adapt better, do a lot of different things. doesn't mean you have to be uh, agree with polygyny. It just means you need to understand that you're dumb as fuck. That's what you need to understand. You're dumb. And so now to that brother who is, who is afraid of women and afraid... Like, ain't nothing high about or functional about your testosterone. As a matter of fact, you have more astradiol hydrophilically bypassing your membranes and talking to your DNA. Which I'm about to show. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that we had to be retaught how to think. Because we think that thinking is an opinionated operation. It's spooky. It's spooky just like your spook gods. And it's not, actually. It's a system. It's an operation. And you can make that operation dysfunctional or functional based on how, uh, how self-aware that you are. I don't know why I'm getting these notices. So this is about maturation and other people helping you mature. Because you might think that you're mature and not be. So let's go to this. I want to I want to give you some basic fundamental things in science first. So I can help you. And then we can we can go to um we can go to uh, more elevated conversations. All right. So I want to talk a little bit of science to you. So now, how cells talk to each other, all right? You have autocrine functioning. Autocrine functioning is a cell talking to itself. And as I go through this, I'm going to show you on a micro world and a macro world why this is important. Cells talk to themselves in order to maintain their autonomy and health. Meanwhile, you think somebody talking to themselves in the form of meditation and prayer is spooky because you don't understand. Yes, you need to be talking to yourself. Because there is a self in you that I'm about to explain that can help you increase your awareness. And it's not spooky. Also, cells talk to each other. That's called power crying. Uh, function. 
the paracon functioning is two selves talking to each other. So people need to establish communication in order to establish health. And without that communication, you're going to have some problems. You also have endocrine communications where cells are talking to each other or proteins or molecules are talking to each other over long distances and the endocrine system is using the bloodstream. So we have to have, so we have, to have the ability to talk to each other over distances in order to have a highly evolved intelligent organism. If our communication network is only local, now we're missing building intelligence and building things at a level that is designed how nature is designed. And there are other systems of communication in the body. But this is happening. So how efficient are you at doing that same thing in your macro world? Because cells talk to each other when they're in the same community sometimes or when they're in different communities. And the more efficient they are at that communication, the better they can function. But one thing that cells have or they start off with is they know their purpose. It's called cellular diversity. A liver cell, when it is healthy, knows it's a liver cell. It knows exactly what it's supposed to be doing. It talks to itself. It talks to the other liver, liver cells. It exchanges with the other liver cells. And it exchanges with endocrine uh, 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 cells and proteins and structures and macromolecules. you in college with $100,000 worth of debt not knowing your purpose. And you, your parents are trying to tell you the next dumb step to make. You need guidance. How did that cell learn to become a liver cell? It was given instructions. It was designed to become a liver cell. There were biochemical processes from stem cell that led it to become a liver cell. How well are your parents guiding you to become what you were born to be? And did they think about that when they were creating you? Because now I'm about to dig into your honesty. Do you actually think that you are going to develop into your best self if you cannot answer that question? Honestly. Oh yeah, now the trauma the stuff that you have to walk through. Did my mama love me? Did my daddy love me? Maybe they didn't even have the capability to love you because they weren't self-aware. How long are you going to be stuck in your feelings about that? Because that event is gone. The only thing left of it is the sensory information that you keep feeding and looping into reality, called an emotion. Which is based on perception. And we about to go there. See, what you have to realize is 
whether you had a good mother or a good father, does not stop you from becoming self-aware of the gifts that you have innately and designing your purpose. However, having a mother and a father that plan you puts you in a better potential position to accelerate at a pace to reach that purpose with less resistance. So don't act like the model that's natural is not the best and start saying it don't matter. Oh yeah, it does matter. And the proof that it does matter is the white people, the Europeans, the Eurasians and other groups of people who are ruling your black ass have been operating off of that formula that they learned from your ancestors. And that's why they rule your ass. So don't act like it don't matter because it doesn't matter. It matters. It does matter, family. It matters. It's just that you are not sentenced to some purgatory or hell because your mama was on crack, your daddy ain't shit. You're not sentenced to that. You're not, you are not, you are not sentenced to that. Unless you accept that. You are not. You can graciously overcome all those challenges and become the best you. We've seen it happen. And so those formulas are, are important because they mark how we develop. What do we eat when we're younger? What type of stresses are we under or not under? What type of abuses are we under or not under? What type of education are we exposed to at a young age that can help us uh, evolve and move towards designing our purpose at a, in a more efficient way? What are our emotions? Here we go. All right, so I'm going to help you understand what our emotions are, all right? You have four things here, and I would add a fifth. But this is the beginning of your sensory perception or emotions. This is the beginning of it. Every cell, every cell in your body has a membrane. Everyone. Skin cells, eye cells, hair cells, everyone. And that membrane is full of what you call receptors. The first receptor was identified by this woman right here. She wrote the book, Molecules of Emotion. I've been telling y'all about this book for years, all right? Candace Pert, in the early 1970s, was the first to specifically identify a cell receptor. And the one that she identified was the opioid receptor, all right? It is an uh, extracellular receptor, because there are intracellular receptors, too. All right. Extracellular receptors are receptors on the membrane and they deal with the water liking or, or hydrophilic ligands. A ligand is anything coming to talk to that receptor, trying to get in the cell. I need to get in. I need to do something. This is the gate. All right, you can see here you have an ion channel. An ion channel allows for stuff like magnesium, sodium, calcium to come into a cell. For instance, for your muscles to contract, 
the myosin has to catalyze calcium ions into the muscle cell. You depleted in calcium, you tire out of workouts quicker. Your endurance is lower. Or you can't even think faster than someone who has a higher level of calcium in that exchange rate. Even people who are suffering from seizures, this is the mechanism that is dysfunctional. The ion channels are disturbed. You want uh, cellular repair. This is where I get into supplements. There are eight forms of magnesium that you need, and magnesium plays the key, one of the key roles in DNA repair. So as long as you're deficient in magnesium, you're going to age faster than people, and you're not going uh, to have the mechanisms for DNA to actually self-repair. Some people be thinking, oh, I'll leave running this healthcare program. Um, you know how much study that I have put in in order to settle on an idea to run that particular plan and what specifically to put in it so that you can learn the science and the art of supplementation, not just going to stores and buying shit randomly in ignorance based on what? Let's go back. Dysfunctional manipulation because this herbalist told you take this and this and this in a non-coherent fashion. Non-coherent means there's no pattern to it. It has no purpose and it's kind of really chaotic. Yeah, yeah, you need to detox. You need to detox. Don't even know what the word fucking detox means. You don't start detoxing when you take that shit that the person is giving you. Your body is constantly in a state of regeneration and detox, and its efficiency is based on what you put in or what you don't put in. Science, scientifically. I got the new detox. I got the new detox. So sometimes I got to get real grown and call you what you want. You dumb as fuck. And you cannot compete with external enemies, internal enemies, or maintain your own health being that fucking dumb. You cannot. Somebody got to say it real strong to you about how fucking... And it's going to lead to what you don't want it to lead to. You're going to age faster. You're going to get uglier. You're going to get fatter. You're going to lose your ability to uh, feel good when you're getting up all kind of aches and shit just because... You aren't taking the highest quality information. You're taking some shit and you're, you're easily led in the wrong direction or hard to lead in the right. That's a good way to put it. You need to master the science of supplementation. I am telling you respectfully and humbly, I am a master at supplementation. I'm talking about two decades of testing and study to the point where I can change my body pretty much at will with still with a lot of knowledge that I need to learn, but with a foundation to say, all right, uh, I don't have no aches. And if I, if, if I get an ache, I'm aware already, oh, I did something that was out of order. I did, what did I do? Oh, I was traveling and I ate at a new place. Ah, shit. Yeah. Got a little something that happened for 35 minutes. Elbow kind of funny after a workout, after boxing. Like, why is my elbow feeling like it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So, you know, you're aware. So you, and then you can not do that thing to protect yourself. But self-awareness, again, is the key. Self-awareness is freedom. Dysfunctional manipulation creates a slave. Let's keep that model because we're going we gonna to work that model. All right. So we're talking about the ion channels. Then you have this uh, GPCR. 
All right, GPCR is what an opioid receptor is. These outer, outer, uh, these outer receptors kind of work like a lily pad. Think of think of the cell surface because it's really oily, it's like lipids. But think of it like a lily pad, and you have these long roots. And you do something on the lily pad, and then those roots start reverberating. Now, I'm about to get into some very deep shit. Way deeper than these white folks can talk. But I don't care. I don't care if they know. They already know some of this stuff, and some stuff they absolutely don't know. I promise you. Or this, this shit is classified. Man. Ain't no black people out here talking about this. Except, except in Arnold. And only in arm. But let's go. So G couple proteins, that's your opioid receptor type shit. And then you have the enzyme link receptors. All of these are triggering something from the outside to something on the inside. And they go through what's called conformations. They change shape as the thing is talking to it. They change shape as the thing is talking to it. So now, what you need to understand is this. What's happening in these receptors is vibrationally related, for the most part. They're talking through sound and vibration. They're literally talking. They are literally talking. Vibration and sound. They're talking. So you have those three types of, of membranes that are uh, triggered from outside to inside. And what is happening in that process? You have a stimulation from the outside that is triggering shape changes in these and vibrational changes. This is the beginning of your emotions. All an emotion is, is the perception and reception of a biochemical or energetic interface with the cell. So you have these three on the surface. Then you look over to the other side, you have this internal cellular receptor where the substance is hydrophobic. Hydrophobic, phobic meaning against hydro water. And because it is Lipid based, pay attention to what I'm about to make you damn near a PhD in one night. Because it is lipid based, it does not need to come to the gate. It can go through the gate. It can go through the membrane with no permission. And as it goes through, it's going to go straight to the DNA to a gene regulatory area to start uh, talking to your uh, messenger RNA. And if it successfully does so, start protein synthesis, making shit inside the cell, some of which can be exported out outside the cell, but definitely inside the cell. So let me give you two major examples of this so you could understand how important this is. Because there's a fifth type of uh, receptor framework that they're not mentioning. And they know about this one. This is not no damn secret. So two types of hydrophobic intracellular operations that affect mRNA and DNA. Yes, your goddamn vaccine. Your vaccine... Don't need to talk to these ion channels and these GPCRs and these enzyme-like receptors. No, 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 no. They can swim right through the membrane. Now go back to uh, the designer, right? Robert, whatever his name was. What did he actually design? They needed a what? A lipid envelope. Lipid, fat, fat, oil. 
Lipid envelopes can go bypass the cell and go talk to the DNA. They made that vax so it could go talk to your DNA. Then they got on TV and lied to you saying it is not going to alter your DNA, at least the uh, Pfizer one. Johnson & Johnson, they knew they had to tell you partially, but they kept switching the story up. This is not going to... And then the dumb people, what were they saying? Oh, we ain't going to change your DNA. This vaccine ain't going to change your DNA. This vaccine ain't going to change your DNA. You need an Arna science class because you got the CNN science class and brother, that is dangerous. I'm not going to keep you in here over an hour and 30 minutes, hour and 40 minutes. I'm going to get to this point. All right. So that's one example. And yes, the spike protein that is now being made has crate and cobra uh, proteins Spikes that are on the actual spike protein. That is what is making it carcinogenic and toxic. Snake venom. There are studies that put that out. We put that out way a long time ago. That is a fact of science. And so now you need to understand what has happened to you. You now have a self-replicating operation that could lead to blood clots and getting you killed. Now, the second type of thing, and I did a viral video on this in 2020, and they shut down my Instagram page, uh, they shut down the YouTube page, just because I said this, these two things. I told you what? Vitamin D3 will stop COVID. Then I went and I said two other things. CBD at a certain milligram strength and taking your ass outside. Do not stay inside. Because the acetylcholine, which is a neurotransmitter, is needed in this whole immune process thing. And the reason why they told you to stay inside is because it was a plot to shut down that neurotransmitter. But the vitamin D3 itself will protect you from COVID. And when you want to enhance that, you could have added the CBD at a high grades. And it was only a few people that were making it at 20,000 and 30,000 milligrams. Um, and I only knew two people because I trained my people how to make it. Now, anybody in the, in the class you hear something different now. Maybe it's all just crystallizing because we have two ways of approaching the herbology. Don't we? Don't we? Tinctures that are mainly for bloodborne illnesses that are not going to bypass the cell to go to the DNA to trigger things. And then other substances that are what? Lipid-based, oil-based that are going to go straight to talk to the DNA. And vitamin D3, um, as it develops into vitamin uh, D receptor, you have these vitamin D receptor elements in your DNA, thousands of them, that it can go talk to, reorganize if they have uh, nucleotide mutations or epigenetic mutations. I'm telling you how important the sun is now. So now the sun can change your DNA. And I ain't talking about no 12 strand DNA, astro conscious weirdo online who talking some dumb shit. I am talking science. I'm not talking no theories. I'm talking science. And everything that I'm talking about, you will find in pieces and parts in different studies all around. This is why I look at people who say, oh, you got to eat raw because you're going to kill all the enzymes. I'm looking at you and I'm saying you are not qualified. And there are medical doctors and other people saying this stuff. 
Oh, don't, don't cook the Brussels sprouts. Don't go. You're going to kill all the enzymes. Nigga, you need to kill a few of those enzymes, which will act on your immune system adversely, especially in something like a gordogen. What do you mean don't cook it? No, cook it. You can't eat that shit raw. The whole raw food movement, the vegan movement, the keto movement, all of these movements are dysfunctional manipulation. It does not mean you can't take some things apart if you're a scientist from it and function properly. It just means every one of them is off. All of them. We've been studying them for over two decades, experimenting with them, and we know it. They're off. For instance, each one of these, each one of these receptor frameworks is based on proteins. So you need the carboxyl acids or the amino acids to build them up. You taking all your protein out of your diet and you don't know how to supplement as a plant-based or a vegan person, which means that you are injuring these ion channels, G GPCR uh, membrane receptors, these enzyme-linked membrane receptors. Like you're, you're, you're actually working against yourself and you're shriveling up to show it. I just had a client a few weeks ago, uh, maybe a few months ago now. She had shriveled down to like 93 pounds because she's on the plant-based Dr. Sabi, all the other shit diet. I said, no, 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 baby girl, you can't do that. So let me send you some supplements. I'm going to send you to the store to get you some wild fish to eat it so you can start to gain weight and feel better. And that is what is happening. There are, there are even different types of of amino acids or carboxylic acids in your um, cells and liver will attach things to them that are different to make them into ligands that can communicate. So we we have to have people who are doing diagnostics, people who have who do real research. We have to have these things, and we have to have them in a capacity where they are not dysfunctionally manipulated slaves who believe everything that white folks say, hook, line, and sinker. You need autonomy. Autonomy equals self-awareness. That's how you build it up properly. Because then there's no bias. So they took that viral video down because I gave people that jewel. Then we go to the fifth type of receptor operation that can alter DNA. They're calling it the guard particle. And this takes me into my subject. They're trying to find the guard particle. Why are they trying to find the guard particle? CERN, CERN is messing up the magnetic field. Now they're trying to connect what CERN has been doing to problems in the Earth's core and the magnetic field. That's very possible. Ain't no damn demons being unleashed, though. So this fifth type of cell interface is based on what? Light, but not the type of light that you want to talk about. No, 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 no. Not necessarily Roy G. Biv, red, orange, yellow, those bandwidths. We're talking about full radio waves, full ultraviolet waves and its connection to melanin. That's the one that they don't want to talk about because now you're about to get into the spooky shit. You're about to get into the ESP shit. You're about to get into all that shit that Ali likes to talk about. But not in a non-technical way, in a very technical way. Because radio waves are real. Not only are radio waves real, they're using it. IBM and other companies are building, building quantum computers. And when they build the quantum computers, what do they have to do? They have to study the temperature in space. 
to try to mimic or create a environment that's colder in order to build this quantum computer so it can operate functionally. Why are you mimicking space? You're lowering the, electri the electrical resistance, right? So you can have a, a more functional communication network. You're trying to talk to quantum particles. And, and now, now I'm about to go outside of their universe now. I'm about to leave them now. Einstein, Albert Einstein, was looking for the unified field theory, right? How to unify all the forces of physics. And if you don't know, there are four. Electromagnetism, gravity, strong force, and weak force. And I don't want to leave you, but you got something to study now. But they're trying to say, well, the quantum world, we can't connect it to gravity, so we can't make this. <laughs> oh, yeah, yes, yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. What the fuck is gravity? What is it? Gravity is the same thing that a magnetic field is. Oh, yeah. And a magnetic field is the same thing that the mind is. Y'all can thank me for that one, too. If y'all needed a thorough definition of what the mind is, the mind is a magnetic field. The end. We did that in this book. We proved that point. And as, as time goes on and more experiment and more technology, we're going to be able to prove all these things with machines that can think. They're doing it now, partially. But there's one thing that they can't access and they want it so bad and they, they can't access this guard particle. They're trying to access it. The methods that they're using are getting them closer and closer and closer. There's two things that you need to access it. Here's, here's the basis of the secret. Two basic things that you need. What are they? And this is what Charles Darwin, when he was studying Al Jahiz's text on evolution, he kept three things that Al Jahiz studied and he took the fourth one out. So that lets me know, okay, we ain't letting that in. Why you ain't letting that in in your study of evolution and eugenics? because now we got to go into the secret. What is the secret? The secret is was revealed by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Two things. Two things. What are they? What are they? I'm going to give you one. The truth, the truth, the truth. The second one is the light. And I'm gonna break this down for you. The truth and the light without being spooky. The light or the nur is what you call Full attenuation in physics. It is the band of light that is the root and basis of all the other light and is the source of all the other light. And what is the source of all the other light in this universe? It is blackness. Shown and distributed greatest in gravity with what you are trying to call a black hole several different types of black holes. And that singularity or that force has to be black.
Because inside of black is every other band of radio waves, gamma ray, ultraviolet light, uh, red, infrared, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo. It's contained in its originator. And so what is the truth? The truth is the science and art of keeping these various waves coherent, which means they learn how to cooperate with each other in the creation, maintenance, and proper removal of what you're calling life. Let me put that in a better terms, in, in, in forms of humans. In forms of humans, it is the truth, your code. Your light is your ability to connect to your creator, which is in yourself and your ancestry and recognize your own divinity and purpose and to communicate in a functional way based on that purpose, which we call the truth. The more you master that, the more you really become an alchemist, the more you, more you really become functional, the more you recognize, oh, I'm gonna die one day. But I chose a woman or women to reproduce myself immortally through my seeds. I'm passing on legacy to them, economics. I'm helping them understand their purpose. I know how to read a birth chart. I know how to, you are climbing the ladder of intelligence so you can eugenically maintain your legacy. That's godhood. That's divinity. And all of this plays a part because the same way that these receptors, internal receptors, external receptors, are feeling, talking to each other, talking to the inside of the cell, sensing and emotions. They now have a physical reality that must be maintained. You gotta be healthy enough to keep these receptors in good shape. And these particular receptors, while they're in good shape, are setting your emotional and thought standards. An ion channel can pick up on sodium, magnesium, calcium. A GPR, PCR uh, uh, receptor, when it's healthy, can tell the difference between dopamine and other uh, GP, PCR related uh, substances. Your emotions, yours, are your perceptions based on how healthy you have been developed and created. And I'll give you a basic example of this. Of how your reason should work. I use this example in the book, The Power of Sex. If somebody broke into my house, right? And I have a room with a safe in it. And me seeing them break in, I put my children in the room with the safe, with the key. The wealth is in there, the babies are in there. I'm hypothetically in the bathroom. I didn't lock myself in there for any particular purpose because I'm ensuring that, oh, there's one more key that I got to get. I've used this example in the book and I don't want them to find it. So I get the key and I go to the toilet and I'm going to flush the key because this is going to guarantee what? My legacy survives. The wealth survives. Their mother is still alive. Maybe I'm texting her. And this is me using reason now and emotions to make the best outcome. 
Why would I flush the key? I don't want them to get the key to get to my legacy. So I am sealing off their ability to injure my future and the wealth. And I had to find the key because it was in the house. And if they were to find it, they would have got to the wealth and the legacy. Right. Now, my emotions, fight or flight, are telling me I want to live. But my calmness and reason to my prefrontal cortex, which is a thin layer over the frontal lobe where most of my neurons are, it is the place, a primary place, where truth and well-established memory are taking place. And so now I can reason myself through the situation that says, A, if I don't flush this key, they can get access to my children and my wealth. If I don't find it, they can get access to my children and my wealth. If I let them get access to the children and the wealth under the fear, the entropic fear, the fight or flight, the limbic system fear that I'm going to die, then I can expose us all to death and gamble. Go gamble. Like, look, I want to live, man. This is what y'all want. I just give you the money. I try to open the door that might kill all three of us and take the money. Now my legacy is gone. So in a heated situation, heat, entropy, I have to stay cool-headed. Just like that quantum computer is in space in a very cool environment so the electrons can flow properly, I have to let my uh, electrons, my thinking, my, my functions, all right? Electrons don't carry out thinking, but they are part of it. That's, you know, uh, neurons, neurotransmitters, and synapses, and axon terminals. Though That's the pathway. We, we, we'll, we'll talk about that too. I got to make the best decision. A healthy body, a healthy mind makes the best decision based on calculations. So regardless of what's going on in that house, I've already texted my wife. The police are on their way. I got a firearm, let's say. And it's me against them. My children, they can't get in. They walled off. I didn't make a decision based on fear. I made a decision based on reason, logic, prefrontal cortex. I didn't make a limbic uh, system decision which is what most of you make. You're angry, you're mad, you want revenge. Your synapses lead to the limbic system with the amygdala, uh, amygdala. and instead of processing the uh, synapses to the prefrontal cortex, breathing, relaxing the body, calming the atomic nervous system, no, you're rattled, you're friend. And now what you're about to do is you're about to make a chaotic decision. You open the door and let them into your children. They kill all of y'all and take y'all money. Your legacy gone, your wealth gone, you're on the news and you're out of here. No, I got a chance to live. They got zero chances to get to my children. And I got backup coming because the cops been calling. And I text my wife like, look, somebody just broke in. I got the babies in the safe and they, they cool, but get them here quick. These are the types of of things we get confronted with in life. And healthy-minded people, people who have the type of thinking that I'm talking about, make the most intelligent decision. And people who are not, don't make the most intelligent decision. Now I got a chance for everybody to live and me to kill the offenders or for me to die, which I am willing to give my life for my six children. And saving them and saying, that's me in their genes, living on forever. My grandchildren and great-grandchildren, I don't have any grandchildren yet, but that's going to be me. That is me when I understand self. But we're so dysfunctionally manipulated. We don't think about children coming in generations after us as us because we are really not that intelligent. Even though nature gave us the ability to actually produce ourselves into perpetuity, we still don't see it 
even though we're doing it. That's the walking dead, nigga. So how many times have you in your life been in a situation where you made the dumbass decision? I've been in that situation where I made the dumb decision. Why did I do that dumb shit? I knew I shouldn't have did that shit. But what? Trauma? Not standing on code? Not doing something in a way that will enhance something beyond yourself that is valuable? We do this because of how we have been taught. And it mirrors in our physiology, in our anatomy. You ever see somebody trying to remember something and their eyeballs go up and left? Why is the eyeball going up and left? Because literally the magnetic force of the action of the prefrontal cortex and the neurons, the neurotransmitters, the synapses and axons are pulling it up that way. They're literally trying to remember, which is one of the memory centers, one of the major memory centers. There are three parts of the brain that deals with deception. Temporal lobes, the uh, limbic system, and parts of the frontal lobe, but not the prefrontal cortex. So when you see somebody's eyes go down and to the right, ah, they're not trying to access memory. They're now trying to formulate or fabricate a story. And their, their eyeballs cannot even resist the magnetic pull of the charge of where the organ is that they are using to do what they're doing. This is how polygraphs work. Polygraphs work by uh, testing certain parts of the body, the blood pressure, the atomic nervous system. All right? These things are measurable. And they're all perception-based. So now, how do we build our perception? Our perception is built out what goes in our eyes, what goes in our nose, what goes in our mouth, what goes in our ears, and what we can touch and sense or what can sense us, even if it's radio waves, physical touch. Touch is broad. These are the macro receptors, just like the five micro receptors. We have Five microreceptors, one which they won't mention, which I mentioned. All right. Three cell membrane based, two that are intracellular. And we have five macro receptor intake systems. Our eyes intake, our nose intakes, the olfactory system, the gustation from our taste, the hearing, the auditory and the vibration, and the feeling, the feeling, our skin. And so now these things shape our emotions, but our emotions are shaped so our perceptions and perception is based on memory. Now I'm about to go to another part. This is where I'm about to go and get, get we about to go all the way. Let's go all the way. Let's go all the way. Hopefully I'm helping y'all understand some of this stuff. All right. Let's go to uh, let's go to the, the whole synapse network so we can understand how this works. All right. Now, what I'm about to show is the end of. This is the synapse region at the end of an axon terminal. Right. But basically, if I were to go further way up here. You can have the actual neuron with the dendrites. This is the end of axons. Axons are like the tails to a neuron. And you have neurotransmitters being secreted here, right? And then you have these things called axon terminals. This is where your memory is built. So look. The more honest you are, the less you have uh, hydrophobic intercellular receptor 
disturbance. Let me break that down. Cortisol, one of the main stress hormones, is very useful when you are preparing for a threat. But if the threat stays too long, what you have is that steroid type of hormone bypassing cellular membranes and altering DNA and uh, RNA synthesis. It is going to distort how your proteins are built. Lies distort protein synthesis. Lies destroy good memory. All right, so you need to look up axon terminals because we're about to go somewhere with this thing, all right? And 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 let me let me let me let me put this in context. Cause this is about to get you might call me names by saying this. The original man and woman are made after nature. The things that have happened to us epigenetically and some asymmetrical mutations are real. We are not at the highest level of our existence. Yet, yet we have the physiological proof and the genetics. And if we have the cultural awareness, we can rebuild it. It's like an old building that has some damage to it, but it's not in collapse mode. Some of us might be in collapse mode. I'm not in collapse mode. All right. I'm in I'm in the mode where that rebuilding can take place and it could be a healthy rebuilding. And all of us need to get there through the various means, our nutrition, our health, our, all those things. All right. And so what I'm saying, I'm saying that to say that our biochemistry is designed based on nature and the truth is our power. It is our power. It is electrically coherent. It will reduce hydrophobic interface with our DNA and RNA that causes disturbances. And it will allow for us to build physically healthy tissues, molecularly, protein-wise, uh, tissue-wise, et cetera. And in that process of doing that, we will build a healthy memory. Not just memory of short-term, but long-term memory. And those, there are two different types of memory. You have the sensory input, then you have the short-term memory, then you have the long-term memory. And the body will use each in a unique way. That long-term memory is a superpower for you because you've been here on earth longer than these other people. Not only that, the carbon in your body is, is, is uh, coherent, and sourced from your star. And your star makes things in your body in order for it to communicate with your DNA, uh, your immune system, other things. So I'm saying that to say your long-term memory is being shut down by colonizers and genocide because they don't want your avatar powers to come on. And books like, like I got books like this, like, don't think that ESP is fake. Not only do we perform it, but they know it's real. This is the Silver Method. Go get this book by Jose Silva. They did all of the studies, experiments to talk about ESP and uh, journaling the research scientifically so you can see it. So I, I don't want you to be spooky about this. This is a real thing. Eurasians here we go now. Eurasians don't have that same you melanin. They don't have the same S&P profile. 
or the older gene pools, nor do they have the relationship that you have with the son. They have a relationship with the son, and the son but they don't have your relationship. Yours, theirs is very different. And so now when we start about talking about genetic memory, long-term memory, of course they can uh, uh, store you know, uh, long-term memory. But now what you're about to get from Ama is a breakdown of why we are genetically superior, biologically superior, and if we take from our real religion, which is nature itself, there's no way anybody can beat us. No way. And the truth has everything to do with it. Because the lie, you know what it's going to do. It's going to cause vasoconstriction. Lower the blood flow. Stop you from getting nutrients. Imagine a highway that's five lanes, shut down to two. Now you got a traffic jam. And imagine conditions being orchestrated by the pathogens in order for you to stay in those fixated states. Oh, I got to pay the bills. Oh, I ain't happy with this marriage. Oh, I know. oh, it's the end of the world. Oh, it's oh, the, the banks are failing. Oh, and it's nothing wrong with being aware of those things. But what is your response mechanism? Do you have problem solving going on inside of your prefrontal cortex? Or is your prefrontal cortex by habit almost shut down because all your responses are limbic system based. You have to get out of your dysfunctional emotions and get into reasons. Nothing wrong with emotions. Emotions are powerful, necessary, and they have great value. Just like when we talk about entropy, entropy is uh, destruction. But destruction can be a very useful tool in the body if it is guided and planned and not chaotic. We need apoptosis to happen in some areas in order for things to function properly. So this is about how well guided we are, what codes we use. Now, these axon terminals need to be studied. That's where memory is taking place. We know for a fact that an honest person is more peaceful. It's not that they can't be confrontational, but even in their confrontation, they're well-grounded. Just like the example that I just gave. There's nothing wrong with being violent. This whole pacifist shit See, these are programs. No, you don't need to be pacifist at a time where it's time to stand your ground and have self-defense. You need to be very violent. However, your violence is calculated. Your violence is well-planned. You're coherent. Your coherence, literally your brainwaves will get you in a better outcome. And so where do I want to go with this? Let's go here. Because now we're talking about all these receptor frameworks and how they work. Let's go here. I'm about to teach you something that you probably did not know. Let's go back to these guys. I'm going to help you understand something about Thoughts, emotions, and perception. So I can make you realize that you have power over your destiny. You can literally create success for yourself and nobody can stop it. How does this work? Remember I talked about these receptors, these, these cellular membrane receptors. One of the things that they do is confirmations. They alter and change shape. Hmm. Interesting. Alter 
and change shape. And how do they do it? They do it through vibration. Now I'm going to take you through a science class. And remember, we were talking about the mind being magnetic fields. The earth has its own magnetic field. The earth has a mind. Humans have brain waves, iron, and wave fields. Humans have a mind. Animals have minds. Organisms have minds. They can think. If they have sensory perception and these same types of things, we look at these things as not thinking. Mm -mm -mm. But the magnetic fields are the key to inducing the thinking. Planets are sentient. An example of this. In the Quran, there's only two places where the supreme being is described. In Surah 24, verse 35, Allah is called Nur. Nur means light. Go back to that physical attenuation and this black body radiation that I was talking about. That is Allah. And then go to Surah 15, verse 26 through 29, where he creates, or it creates, a human that is Hama Masnu. I told you the word Hama. Y'all have to study etymology. That's one thing these Arabs won't teach you. Hama is a guttural H, Ham, Ham. And that guttural H goes back to the Gittes and the Coptic. And that girl, control H is the same thing as Chen in Kemet. It's the same thing. That is the direct lineal uh, uh, linguistic genetics for interpreting that word. Not no damn tafsir from no Arabs who don't know what the word means. Chama Masnun means to create and mold something out of something black. What is that blackness you're using? It is carbon. It is eumelanin. And then after the eumelanin, what did he say? It said that Allah breathed his ruach into this black man. Ah, spirit, energy, light. We are literally photosynthetic with the sun. This is what is being described in the Quran. So we have Chemet or Chama. And then we have Alhamdulillah. The praises for Allah. The Alhamdulillah does not mean all praises due to Allah. Chemet means in that sense the land, the earth, the soil. And what they're saying there is the land. You have to go back to what they were doing. They were getting rid of colonizers. They were telling you that we are indigenous to this land and the land is for God, not for you, colonizer. And we coming, and what did they do? They took the land. They didn't take the praise. This is what happens when a foreigner interprets language, meaning, history for you, you, st you think the praise is well, so you just keep praising the mystery. You ain't thinking about taking the land back. Anyway, these receptors operate off of vibration or sound. There were some quacky internet people using my star prophecy materials, getting on shows, half baking and cooking the information. So I ethered one of them on Instagram. I ethered them. I did. Oh, yes, I did. 
Why did I do that? Because I'm an immune cell. And you're not about to come up and deceive the people about what I was the first one to write about in Star Prophecy and then start tricking and using your dysfunctional manipulation to talk indirectly about a free and aware person's uh, uh, body of information and deceive people. I'm talking about Billy Carson. Yeah, he's a scammer. Absolutely. On record as a fraudulent person stealing, literally convicted of stealing someone's identity and ID. You can go to his LinkedIn right now and it says that he went to Harvard University and MIT. And you can go check the uh, college uh, directory because you can look up anybody's name, including mine, and see what university I went to. And you up there telling people you went to MIT and Harvard and you are you are literally I you into identity theft, fraud, and weird spookism. Don't start using my information. Just leave me alone. But the point is, you up there repeating things online is for fantasy. But it goes to this point right here. Master Fraud Muhammad told us that the black man's mind has seven dimensions. Seven. And you get into this world, oh, we are you're you're a third density. You're a third density. I'm in the fifth dimension. Are you really? Are you really? Because one of the one of the things that happens with a fifth dimensional person is their practice of honesty is very high. Phil Valentine is not fifth dimensional. I'm sorry. Phil Valentine is a deceiver and a dysfunctional manipulator. Oh, sure, sure. He 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 does speak some truths and some some he's 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 developed the art of the gift of gap. But follow his track record, and I have. No, sir. And am I dissing people now? You might say that, but let's get off of the people and get to the point that I'm trying to make about the science. All four dimensions came into existence together. There is no such thing as a third dimensional being. No. You can't even exist without the fourth dimension. You don't have to turn on the light of the fifth dimension. You can't even exist. What are those dimensions? Force is the first dimension. Force equals a mass accelerating. You cannot even have particles on the quantum level or any level without force. Force is the fundamental uh, shorthand of physics. You have to have force to have anything else. Very simple. This is mathematics. Then you have vibration. A force moving in a cycle. Some people call that also sound. In the beginning was the word. However you want to put all that magical stuff. You have to have vibration. And the third Dimension is light. Light in the form of all the bands of light. Radio waves, gamma rays, these develop as a result of the vibration or oscillation of waves. This is all around you and identifiable. And the fourth dimension is time because that oscillation or movement of the particles starts to record movement of things. So you have all four and they all come together. You can't have one without the other. You can't have vibration without a force. You can't have light without a force. You can't have time without vibration. 
You can't have none of those where they come together and they are the basis of all creation all around you, all the planets, all the suns, the stars, the moons, the nebulas, the black holes, all operate within that framework and you can't take them out. Now, fifth dimensional and onward. What is fifth dimensional thinking? Fifth dimensional thinking is the self-regulated and autonomous act of self-awareness in any organism in order for its own survival. In humans, the fifth dimension is your inner person analyzing yourself and the outer world using all of these senses so you can think and emote. And we all have a fifth dimension. The fifth dimension is not locked to one person. Your level of use of that fifth dimensional operation says your success, your failure, your decisions, your all those other things. Someone can have a very well cultivated fifth dimensional self. Their analysis powers, their self awareness, their uh, methodology and code that they use to observe, sense, emote, and think is high. Somebody could be random, chaotic. They're still, they're still observing. They're still emoting. They still have sensory perception. But they're under dysfunctional manipulation. I'm under manipulation too, but I'm under two parents who raised me healthy, right? And now I'm, so my manipulation is the problem is whether the manipulation is dysfunctional. We have all been manipulated. Manipulated can, manipulation can be very functional and free. Now, when you get to sixth dimension, now you're in the school of the prophets because you are now recognizing the coherence and lack of coherence in things. For instance, a virus, it's a non-coherent entity. All of the six pathogens are because they disturb natural circadian rhythms and uh, physiological operations. So you wouldn't make a virus and put it in the body in order to do anything. And that's a big part of biological uh, operations is to upload things into viruses to get it into the body because they wanted to what? Get it past this nuclear envelope. I mean, this uh, cellular membrane envelope. So they'll put the virus inside of a lipid envelope. I'm going to give you a vaccine with the virus in it in order to improve your immunity. Why don't you give me some vitamin D? Why don't you tell me to go out in the sun? Since we can prove, and you can too, that this catalyzes repair on the nuclear DNA level. Why wouldn't you do that? It's not your culture because you're a pathogen and I'm not. You don't want to reveal the secret of my self-awareness. But I can do that on six dimensional time because I can recognize coherence. Coherence is, oh, I did my reading for the week, for the 52 day, for uh, the uh, the annual reading, the seven year reading, I did it or whatever. And you don't have to use this, you can use a birth chart. It show coherence is the ability to read things in nature as they are and flow with them properly. And to see in time in the past and the future before it happens. Because now you understand the cycles. You've recorded the cycles. We can look here and see that the United States of America 
is on nine fire and seven fire in 2024 after July 4th after his birthday. What foreign power are they about to go to war with? How is that connected to the banking stuff that is happening? It's all connected. And we can see it and have seen it in advance and have been talking about it and are preparing in advance, which means that the bad outcome cannot impact a six dimensional being because they are already prepared before it happens. They don't have to wait. They are now becoming a timeless being in the sense of their ability to adapt and exist. And then we get to a seventh dimensional being, which is a being who whatever they think is so in harmony with these cycles, they become a creator. They can create it. They can make it. They can design something from their thought processes and bring it into existence without any successful challenging. That is a God. That is a God. That's your dimensions. And time, the structural operation of time, let's go back to it, right? To the sixth dimension is the sun, the moon, the planets, the black holes. So there's a structural basis for that time calculation in those rhythms. And when you get to the seventh dimension, you're getting to these things that we call black holes. This is how we can chart Ramadan properly. We know that in the winter solstice, the winter solstice is Laylat al Khadra. And this is why in that same surah, they talk about the bow. The bow is the Sagittarius A black hole that the sun is cycling around. Local standard of distance. We can chart all these things. And those black holes are resonant frequency portals, meaning... When the reason why we have the Ramadan typed at the right time is because we use that energy to what? Do Salat. The breathing, uh, sunrise meditations, Zur, new meditations, Magri, sunset meditations. Those were the three. Those are circadian rhythms. We only had three prayers and that's in the Quran. It's telling you that. This five prayer, other stuff prayer, those are those were intentionally later put in. You had three obligatory and one non-obligatory. And there were specific things you're supposed to be doing at each point, visualiz different types of visualization. They not, are never going to teach you that. Because they don't want you visualizing what is in your head to bring it out by yourself and in unity with your family and your community. They don't want you doing that. You are now you are now implementing your real godhood. You destroyed the mystery god, and we can't stop you. Your thoughts and your emotions are a full benefit for you as a human being now. We cannot let you get there. We can't let you discover your melanin. We can't let you discover your vitamin D3 and how it's related. We can't let you talk about these receptors and how to get your emotions in check. We can't let you get rid of the trauma, which is not even real. You can literally, through nutrition, exercise, which is getting rid of that stress, breathing techniques, visualizations, good environments, literally get rid of the trauma. Like, it'll just die off. Life is a habit. Those epigenetic factors that a parent may have left you, that's causing you to have anxiety disorders, that anxiety disorder is epigenetic. You can alter and change that through nutrition, healthy lifestyles, living literally. Like you can just get rid of it. It don't have to stay. It's not even real. The only thing that's left of it is the epigenetic factors that can be removed. You can improve these ion channels. You can improve these GPCR channels. This is why I talk about um, marijuana and cannabis. People are like, oh, Ali, you're talking about using CBD and smoking marijuana and da, 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 da. And you're talking about, and I'm talking about science. 
your religious belief systems or the local reverend preacher, whoever you listen to has nothing to do. Cause I used to think like you th thought too, until I put that thought process down, became objective, unbiased, tested, studied. And then I said, okay, this is how this works. They keep us dumb through belief. You're putting smoke in your lungs. Every time you breathe, you're breathing a gas. Several gases. The lung is a gas chamber. As soon as you burn it, you're changing the chemistry of it. Absolutely, you are changing the chemistry. And if you have a clean, it's not to your detriment. I promise you. I test my lungs all the time, diagnostically. And I have times where I go months without doing that particular intigen. Addiction and all of these things are a part of the unself-aware, manipulated mind. Everything becomes a crutch. Because you're not doing it to enhance self-awareness. You don't have a purpose and design around why you're doing it. Like I said in the song 420, dumb niggas want to be cool. That's what's happening. And so perception is everything. And a God perception is not a slave's perception. Your beliefs and your dysfunctional feelings about a thing that another person could be using and doing mat, uh, alchemy with, it's just two different worlds. You might say, having two wives is nasty. The pH, I heard all kind of crazy shit. The pH of the women and the... Da, 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 da. you just talking and you at a lower level of intelligence. Matter of fact, that I won't call that intelligence. You just at a lower level of thinking and it's dysfunction. But you can help yourself get up out of there if you become unbiased, breathe through all of that trauma and bullshit belief that you have and say, you know what? Let me be honest with myself. I have not been studying. I don't know shit about no damn ion channels. I don't know shit about how my body and myself even perceive. That's not a part of what I've been doing with my life right now. I can't even lie. I've been doing some other shit. I haven't been exercising. I haven't been taking supplements because I just felt like I didn't really need it like that. Shit, I'm healthy. You just start talking dumb shit to yourself because you don't have a basis in reality. al haq the truth. The truth is your best friend. And you watch half humanoid beings get success out of lies, not understanding pathogens have to deceive the body in order to survive. That is their nature. There we go. Their nature says you must suffer and they must trick you in order to survive because if you decolonize them out of your body, where do they have to go? What do they have to feed on? Everybody is not the same. Everybody is not the same. But God is a God of love. Sure. Love is a covenant with nature. You take somebody from Norway and you put them on a hot ass Jamaican beach. And they want to live in Jamaica now. They better scream themselves from the star that's giving life for all things on this earth. They have to scream themselves from life. 
or else they'll get melanoma. You telling me that you about to charge the son with a hate crime for cooking that Neanderthal? Sorry, buddy. You need to study history. You need to study the human skin. You need to understand why that is happening. And here's a even better. I'm gonna throw you. I'm gonna throw. I'm gonna throw you a bone. Let's get over here in Ama and come up with all the formulas to say, okay, y'all want a safe way to become black again? We charging you. Because y'all taking mel melanotan and all kind of other synthetic ways now. And yeah, it's not a plan. It's not a good plan. Which y'all might say, I heard people say to me, man, why are you let them devils die? Y'all ain't about to take them off the planet. Let's give them a 600-year program to get grafted back into the original people and charge them, charge it to the game. Anyway, that's a hypothetical conversation. The point that I'm trying to get to is you can't charge the son with a hate crime. You don't know what love and hate actually is. You can't know. You have to reevaluate your thought of love. And be gentle with yourself in the process. And be honest with yourself in the process. It doesn't mean you have to go out here and actually elucidate hate towards people and call people names and, you know, be radical and other things. But I am not lying when I say what I say, what I just said. That's a reality that they know exists that they don't want to become the dominant thought amongst indigenous peoples because it puts them at a disadvantage. They would rather you believe that you evolved from a hairy pink skinned hominid somewhere in Africa and that your skin is a result of evolution from melanomas and cancers. That's how melanin divides. That standard evolutionary biology in most of the world's universities. And that, my friend, not only is it unscientific, but we can prove it. Oh yeah, we can prove it. We know why y'all got hairy. We know that that was an adaptation to attempt to save a being going extinct. We know what those hair hairs represent. Those are apocrine glands going bananas. Because now the pheromone system is out of whack and we need more because we got to save every organism in this universe attempts methods to survive, even if it's gradually going to collapse into extinction. It tries. That whole hominid history was about an attempt by those people to avoid extinction. And we got the evidence to say they went extinct, partially, right? Because they admixed with us and kept those Neanderthal genes. And the only way we get those Neanderthal genes is if we admix with them because we don't even have them without the admixture. We are not the same. Or the Denisovan, we are not the same. You can't refute nothing that I'm saying right now. It's a fact of science and history. And we know how racist these curriculums are and why they're racist. Because in order to stay in a position of power, you cannot tell the truth. You have to tell a lie. That puts you in a position of power. The lie. The truth puts you in a position of power. Hopefully I've said something that helps you, go back, study what I've said, 
research it. See if any of these things make sense. Put it together in a little package and keep studying. Because you need to learn how to use your thoughts and your emotions for your success. You don't need to keep arguing, fighting, going back and forth with yourself and other people to the distraction of your own purpose and end up living in a regret about not accomplishing the things that you need to accomplish in life. That is what's called wasting time. Wasting time is, is wasting energy. Wasting energy is wasting your life. Is wasting your life. You're going to have people in your family that hate you. You have Negroes that hate you. So what? Can't let that shit stop you. I mean, niggas online talking shit about me and talking crazy. I got out. It's comedy to me. I had one brother. He's not my brother. But he tried to accuse me of stealing art from him. Are you serious? Thank you for having the drill society, though. See, when you have your own jurisdiction, you can solve problems. Because I sent that affidavit last March, drill society, where I detailed that chimpanzee graphics dude. You say you want some shine, I'll give you some shine. Shit, I'll throw that whole damn affidavit with your text messages begging me for money every week, you crumbling little chimpanzee. What is wrong with you, nigga? I stole a design from you for a design you never made yourself. So you want, see, we done already screenshotted everything now. So you're going to be looking real stupid when you try to say, I made this e shell design. No, 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 you didn't. My ex wife can verify that. She was the first woman in the black community who was using the name E Shell. I was the one who gave the name to her to use. This was 2012, 2013. Where was you? Question everything, chimpanzee graphics. See, niggas will get online because they are jealous, envious, untalented, and Unfortunately, they have low character. Then they'll slander you, and people will just be standing, sitting there, oh, it's all right. Never take a man's word on face value. We need evidence, nigga. I am not about to let one person tell me a story about another person when the other person is not present to defend themselves and believe that person just on GP. Because I might become the person who is dysfunctionally manipulated by an outside party and their toxic emotions. Now I'm sharing that coherent frequency with them. And that becomes a habit. This is why gossip is dangerous. So now y'all see the image that I have by here, right? That's Isha. If anybody think that chimpanzee graphics made that image, they are absolutely misinformed. Y'all don't know who made that image. That image has been around before I used it, before he used it in the public domain, and I have the proof. So look. You pay somebody, imagine you paying somebody to do a graphics job. This is why you can't fuck with people who are not slow. You pay somebody to do a graphics job, they come back with an image they got offline from somebody else or in the public domain, which means you can use it. Then they act like they created it and that you stole it from them. When you paid them and you did the work, I'm a real artist. I got in my resume from the time that I'm 11 years old in art school and I had already self-taught myself how to draw, sketch, paint, which I have real art. This Negro 
This I'm using this example to show you how your thoughts and your emotions can fuck you up. Because that I would have already had that brother making six figures or more now. He's a deceptive, sick Negro that needs to heal. We need these live examples. So this Negro on post lying about this shit. I got all the evidence. Oh, he ain't never paid me for designs. Bro, I sent you a photo of myself to do a cover for a single. It took you 10 minutes to do it. And I told you where to put everything, what colors to put in everything. And it was my photo that you used. I paid you $300 for 10, 10. This is documented. I already sent the affidavit to the Jersey Society. I paid you $300 for 10 minutes of work because I know you were struggling. And you said out of your own text mouth, man, I would have did that for $25. Let me count that. That's a 1,200% increase on the price you would have took. And you are lying saying, I did not pay you for designs. Nah, you can't show not one receipt, nigga, not one, because I don't move like that. I don't move like that. I'm not broke. I don't have broke nigga psychology or broke nigga syndrome. And you will never see me out here doing nobody dirty like that because I am self-aware enough to know what I'm doing to myself when I do that. It's a bunch of weird people out here and you have to be careful. So when I saw him like that, even be before we had any personal confrontation, I distanced myself from him. I'm like, this nigga sitting here not knowing he taking stuff offline trying to give it to me like he just made it. Then by the time I get to the point where I'm busting your bubble, now you, you, you talking crazy. You want to shoot me. We never take that fade I offer you, though. I got proof of that, too. I don't care, bro. I'm only mentioning this for the people who need to understand the example. When you come around in life and you're trying to do good, in your community, you're going to come around some grimy ass niggas. And when you come around grimy ass niggas, be careful. Know how to move around grimy ass niggas. Know how to distance yourself from grimy ass niggas. Stay on code. You get online and talk shit about me on Instagram and Facebook and you posting and all kind of shit. Boy, hey, listen, I am I am Petty LaBelle, nigga. If I, were, if I were to really get on YouTube and do an official video on you begging me for money for your family, I would hurt your feelings. You, you would, at that point, even though you were scared of the fade, you would have to fight. Because there would be no way you could bring chimpanzee graphics anywhere else if I did that. I'm not going to do that right now. So this is a caveat to you or any other nigga that talks about me online in a deceptive fashion. I'm not that nigga. I'm not Obama-esque diplomatic. I will get online and fuck your whole life up. And laugh about it and roll a fat ass hemp blunt afterwards and eat me some avocado and quinoa and laugh at your ass for a long time. Now, that's not my primary mode of action. My primary mode of action would be like, man, I ain't care, man, worry about that. Ain't shit to me. And even if you came on some people shit like, yeah, yeah, all right, yeah, 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 that's cool. Drop that shit. Because I know I'm not on the other side of, of being fucked up. I'm not that type of nigga. But I can be that type of nigga. I promise you don't want to smoke. Because if you wanted to smoke, when I offer you the fade, you would have took it. You bully graphics. And you 
Absolutely. And unfortunately, you put the shit in text and emails. You you declined the fade and said you were going to shoot me. So you're going to put bullets in me. I have no desire to put bullets in anyone that looks like me unless I have to in self-defense. I am here to take the enemy off the planet. That's why I'm here. The enemy is anybody who is against the rise of my people, my community, and my family. I really don't be seeing no black people as like ultimate threats. Unless they weigh up high somewhere, you know, and they got some influence over millions of people and they're intentionally deceiving them. Shit, then I'll just talk about it. It ain't even that deep. But when I'm training, arms training, physical training, what I'm visualizing is not that, bro. Like, I'm not thinking about harming you. But I will, in self-defense, take your ass off the planet if you start talking some crazy shit. Because if you was about that life, nigga, you would have took the fame, nigga. And I know I will fuck you up. Period. And that fade offer is still on the table. No. So, y'all folk need to understand that everybody that look like you ain't for you. And people will test your emotions and test your texture. But I am, I promise you, I'm not the one to fucking test. Because I don't give a fuck. I don't care about winning a fight. I don't care about losing a fight. I don't care about none of that shit. What I care about is my own personal integrity, doing the best I can to be the best human being that I could be, and living my purpose so I can leave something for my people, my children, and my... That's what the fuck I really care about. This other shit that y'all be trying to draw up and this motherfucker trying to do this and this one... Y'all niggas really, really, really don't have confidence in your own purpose and going out and doing some things for yourself. You don't. You don't. Because if you did, your actions would be a little bit different in how you carry. And you wouldn't be out here just straight blatantly lying. On record, knowing that you got text messages and emails and all kind of shit that's against everything that you're saying, and you can't have not one receipt to prove what you're doing, and you just out here saying that shit. See, but it's it's, it's like that because most of the time I, I ain't about to I ain't about to jump on or respond to everything that somebody might see in me because we collect intel. But it's your receptor framework that's fucking up. It's your limbic system that is developing trauma through the jealousy and the envy and the lies. It's not mine. I'm Gucci. I promise. And by you watching my lecture, because I know you watch it because you come on my page and you spy however y'all spying from fake pages, you could actually lose this, use this lecture or presentation to start the process of healing. My guy, you could actually, I'm actually indirectly helping you. Let me stop fucking with y'all, man. Y'all get my point. My point is, bro, this is life, what I'm talking about. This is what we come to do for the people. We come to educate the people and free minds because guess what? Somebody did it for me. I heard Dr. Khalid Muhammad come to Philly. I got a message from my roommate Kareem when his brother Nick had just came home from jail and I was in Camden in college and he threw me the book, uh, The True History of Jesus. I was the one who, uh, when they gave me Dr. Francis Crest Wells, matter of fact, Dr. Francis Crest Wells' book was the first book that I got that really cracked my brain, uh, The ISIS Papers. I'm like 19 in college. These are the people around me who fed me something valuable, 
who I will never forget because of that action. Some of them end up dying and, you know, uh, not making it. Martyrs, damn near. Dr. Khaled definitely won. So in, in repayment for the sacrifices that people who came before me, people who I started understanding psychology, I was reading Dr. Richard King book, African Origin of Biological Psychiatry. These are, I got all kinds of books up here, bro. These are giants who came way before me, who laid a basis for me to help build my brain up, bro. That's what we on. I'll be on some weird shit. And y'all need to stop. Chill out. Everybody makes a mistake, flaw, maybe. I don't know why you are like you are. That's something you have to figure out. All of us out here who are maybe like that. And if I ever brought your name up in a lecture, trust and believe I got every receipt to bring it up. And I do consider myself a part of the immune system of my community. It's not that I'm going to come out and attack people, but I will attack information that I think is at a level of such a detriment, like this fake sand fast that y'all about to do. This fake sand fast y'all about to do, which is not real Ramadan. I'm going to say something about it. We love the minister. You know what? I would never in my life try to destroy your love for a person who inspired you. Because even in my disagreement, I understand the emotional connection that you have to that person and the thanks that you're giving to that person for whatever they contributed to your life. That is actually a noble thing to do. But that does, does, that does not discount the intentional deception carried out by any particular person for any particular purpose, whether it be money, fame, or whatever. It doesn't count that. And it also shows, it shows this. When we are not fully self-aware, we will do things at a lower dimensional function to secure things that we see as important, money, fame, uh, influence that exposes our level of intelligence. So sometimes you might be looking up to somebody who is skilled in the art of manipulation that appears to be skilled in the art of love. And you have to raise your awareness to be able to discern between those things. Because when you do, you're going to improve your life. You're going to improve your decision making. You're going to improve where you invest your time, your money, your energy, everything. And what I'm saying right now, it can only help you. I promise you. There's no deception in it. Absolutely no deception in it. It can only help you increase your success in your life. And if the person can say that with conviction, at, at, as they teach you and at the end of when they're teaching you, and it be a real thing, we're going to clap for that person. But if we know they need that collection plate just to be big, and there's nothing wrong with collecting money for your movement or whatever you're doing, hey, collect some money. You might have put in some effort and people want to back you up. The nigga. The 2023 on the enemy's calendar. It's 15,108, 9 on our calendar. By the we not that slow, bro. We not that slow to be following the sand fast. After I've been teaching on it over 15 years, maybe 16. Come on published literature on it, been saturating YouTube with it for years. Like it's to be investigated so that you can become aware. You, no one's asking you to agree with them off the jump. We're asking you to become a good student. 
And student doesn't just mean you're studying outside information. Student means you're studying internal information because that's where most of the work takes place at. Because you can have knowledge and be a nigga. You can have knowledge and be a certified nigga. But your character and your morality, they're not subjective. I always say this, they're not subjective and neither is righteousness, if you define it properly. Righteousness is honesty, respect, and loyalty. And your morality is not subjective because it is evidence that we can trust your ass. And when you can trust people, guess what? You can cooperate with them and work with them. And what happens when atoms start building themselves into molecules, molecules start building themselves into proteins, proteins start building themselves into tissues, tissues start building themselves into cells. You know what happens? Unity. So morality is the key to unity. And you need to mix it with a good foundation for moving towards knowledge the acquisition of knowledge those two need to go together you can't have one without the other you can't be moral and dumb following somebody's religion and you don't need to be knowledgeable with no character put them things together and then you start getting this that's going on here which is your body your literal physical body starts repairing and you get into all this new stuff, anti-aging and all of this shit that people are talking about. Yeah, you, we can actually accomplish these things. But it takes us uh, it takes us to work on it for real. So I, that's my spill for the night. If I hurt your feelings with anything that I said, I apologize in advance. It was all said in the spirit of unity, awareness, education, shit wartime information. We at war. And so there's nothing wrong with that. Share the information with your family and your friends. If they don't like the delivery sometimes, I know everybody got different styles. Everybody talk different. Um, sometimes I come on and I'm more diplomatic and sometimes I'm not. I promise you when I run classes and the people in honor, you know, when I do my classes, I don't be going off like this. I, I stick to the point. Boom, boom, boom. Think tanks, whatever we be going. None of that. But sometimes when you get on here, you you know, you got to take it back to the block, nigga. How you, how you really dig deep into a nigga brain. Like, nah, nigga, you about to get this shit raw. Because your ass, no. I can feel the resistance sometimes. So it's all good. Love y'all. Share this video, subscribe to the channel, share the channel with your family and friends. Hopefully we said something that uh, can enlighten you.